In this video, I'll cover Path Mode, which is used to temporarily display profile members by just their paths. I'll start with this model of four columns. This is the column profile, and it has an orange material. I want to place beams between the columns, which would be easy if the corners were 90 degrees, but these are not. In this case, the paths for the beams would be easier to create without the columns themselves showing. To switch the columns to path mode, I'll select them all and click path mode. Now each path is represented by a simple vertical line and the 2D profile shape appears at each midpoint. If I zoom in, I can see the orange profile material. Now I can draw out paths for two beams and select both paths. I'll open the profile browser and activate this W12 shape. The top middle placement point is correct. I'll change the material to blue and click Build Along Path. To make it easier to add the beams in the other direction, I'll select these two beams and switch them to path mode as well. Working while in path mode is just like when the profile members are fully displayed. I'll select this beam, making sure to click its profile face so that the actual profile member is selected and not the path edge I added manually. I'll use the Rotate tool to place one rotated copy. Then I'll use Move and create an array of linear copies. These four new beams don't extend far enough, so I'll select them all and click the Extend or Split tool. I'll make sure the correct end is highlighted and extend all four beams to their needed lengths. It may seem that for a single member, the Scale tool would also work here to extend a path line. But Scale is disabled for profile members, both in and out of path mode. This prevents any change to the profile shape itself. Now I'll select all profile representations and click Revert Path Mode to get back the actual 3D objects. Some trimming is needed, which I can easily do with the Trim to Face and Trim to Solid tools. I can also change the profile itself while in path mode. I'll select the four long beams and convert them back to path mode. With these four paths selected, I'll find a channel profile, make it yellow, then edit and update the profile and material. After reverting, I see that the trims for the new beams are still correct. Bringing everything back to path mode, I can see each path and the areas that are trimmed. If I want to view these paths without the profile faces showing, I can open the Layers window and turn off the Path Mode Widgets layer. This is handy for producing line work drawings or for export into other software, such as a structural analyzer. Now I have a model of a 3D pipe path, and in the profile dialog, I have a 12 inch metal pipe profile with center placement. I'll use Smart Path Selection to define the path, then create the pipe. Now I'll move the pipe away from its path curves and erase the original path curves. If I wanted to change the pipe path, I could double click it and use Edit Path. When I make a change and close the group, the pipe is updated. But I can also do this while in path mode. I'll display the pipe in path mode, where each path segment has its own profile shape. To modify the path, I'll do the same thing. Double click the group and use Edit Path. The profile shapes are gone, and I can change the path as I did before. This time, when I close the group, I have new profile faces where I added new path segments. Now say I want to join a smaller pipe to this one, which would be pretty tough to do while the actual pipe is showing. But it's easy in path mode to create the path for the new pipe, since I can reference the existing path. I'll modify the pipe profile to a 9 inch diameter with a different material. I'll select the path and build the pipe. Now when I bring back the original pipe from path mode, I have a clean pipe join. In the next video, I'll introduce assemblies.